Good morning. It's good to be in the house of the Lord. Glad you could join us today. Uh, we're in the book of John, uh, chapter 1 and verse 1. And we're going to find out a little bit about who Jesus truly is, okay? Uh, some people said, well, he was just a great man. Uh, that's one of the big uh, religions of the world said he was a, a prophet. Um, there are others that say uh, other things about him. You know, they want to emphasize pieces and parts of him more than others, or his mom more than others. But uh, um, who is Jesus? Chapter 1, verse 1 of John says, In the beginning, when was the beginning? We don't know. Okay. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was, let's see, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. So we find out, what is the Word? It's God's Word, right? To us, the message is uh, revealing to us, okay? Uh, Jesus is equated as the bread, okay, of life. He's also the washing of the water of word, right? So living water. Uh, so Jesus is more than just a baby in a manger. He's more than some poor dude that's hanging on a cross, dying. He lives. I know he lives because he's in my heart. Um, so the same, this word, this Jesus, was in the beginning with God, and all things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. Look around you. Everything was made by God. Say, well, Hawaii was a desert island at one time, and we brought in all the plants. Where did the plants come from? <laughs> okay, God made the plants. We just shift, shuffled them around, killed off a few in the process even. Um, in him was life, and the life was the light of men. God's life is the light that lightens men. But, you know, there's so much darkness in the world, right? Well, the opposite of that is Jesus, okay? Jesus is the answer to all of our problems. The light shineth in the darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. What? What is this? kind of the same situation you have when someone turns on the bright light when you're sleeping really well. <laughs> uh, the darkness comprehended it not. Didn't, didn't, it just can't quite grasp what it is. And so there was a situation coming, and this was not foreseen by the rulers of the day, okay? They had everything sewed up tight. Everything was a click. Only certain people could enter into heaven in their view. You had to act a certain way. You had to talk a certain way. You had to dress a certain way. You had to eat a certain way. You had to do a certain thing at a certain time, at a certain place and, and thing over and over and over and over and over again, okay? And if you didn't do all of these things, then you weren't going to heaven, okay? You were, you were out. You, you're just too bad. You're unclean. Well, Isaiah spoke of someone coming who was going to shake up everything, and uh, he talked about this person and uh, let's find out who this person is. It says, verse 6, there was a man sent from God whose name was John. It's not the same John that wrote this gospel, okay? This is uh, the one they called John the Baptist. And Baptist churches are not Baptist churches because of John the Baptist. Uh, we baptize as well, but uh, you know, John the Baptist was a forerunner. He was, let's just call him the last of the Old Testament prophets, Amen. okay? So the same came for a witness to bear witness of the light that all men through him might believe. All men through Jesus might believe. Okay. Now John, he was not that light, but he was sent to bear witness of that light. Call attention to it. Okay. Shout it out. Make people uncomfortable. And John was really good at making people uncomfortable, okay? Call him a brood of vipers. <laughs> who warned you? He, he, was, he didn't care who he offended. The, the, all the political uh, niceties were gone, okay? He called it what it was. Sin is a sin is a sin is a sin. He said, repent, in other words, turn from your wicked ways. 
turn. Not, let's just be accepting of what everybody does. No, turn from your evil. Repent and pursue God's way of doing things. Believe in the one true and living God. So verse 8, he was not that light, but he was sent to bear witness of that light that was the true light. That's a capital L in your Bible for a reason, okay? So speaking of God, which lighteth every man that cometh into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. Okay. Now, his word was written in the tables of our heart. Every single person that was ever born, okay? And then that person chooses whether or not they want to pursue a good or evil in their life, okay? With or without the knowledge of Christ. But now the word of God has gone into every nation, every tribe, every almost every single tongue, and even... Uh, idiom and uh, they're starting to get really nitpicky trying to figure out how, how they can get you know, more dialects and translate more but there's very little left to do in translation land uh, it's out there everybody has the gospel he was in the world and the world was made by him and the world knew him not he came unto his own and his own received him not again answering prophecy of, of Isaiah, just as John is an answer to prophecy by Isaiah. It says, but as many as have received him, to them he gave he the power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. You believe on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ? Speak those words that I believe and you are saved, he said. Okay, with the mouth man speaketh, okay? Verse 13 says, which were born not of blood, nor of the will of flesh, nor of the will of man, but you will be born of God because of your faith, just as the same faith that Abraham had in God. And he was saved, okay? A little difference there, but uh, now we have the New Testament. We're in Jesus Christ's blood and we're accepted in. So he says, verse 14, And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld, we handled his glory. Okay, John's word there is a very tender word. He touched him. He says, I know who Jesus was because I was with him. Um, he, John loves to poke fun at old Peter, you know. And he's the younger one, but, you know, here he is again. He says, you know, I touched him. I touched God. That's something else, you know, to be able to, to be able to say that. He says, he says, and we beheld his glory, okay, as the of of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. I just imagine being on the mountaintop. As you start, as he starts lifting up, as he starts going into heaven and disappearing. And then, of course, these angels go, well, what are you guys looking at? He's gone, you know. <laughs> go, go to tell your brothers. Go, to, go wait for the, the, the promise, the, the Holy Spirit that's going to come upon you. <laughs> you know, we're kind of slow that way. They, he, I mean... Peter, James, and John were a little slow when they were on the mount when Jesus transfigured and his glory was shown. And they go, hey, let's go build some tabernacles out of sticks. Let's make some, let's make a fort. And you can come and play with us. No, it, it wasn't that bad. But it was, you know, we're going to make a little shelter. But it kind of was, wasn't it? You know, and, and here is uh, Moses, you know, and uh, probably Elijah, the, the, the law and the prophets, and Jesus hashing out the final phase of Jesus's ministry on earth and what's going to happen next. And uh, Peter, James, and John just don't get it. They, they can't look at them. They're so bright and shiny. And, and they're like, well, uh, maybe can, can, we got to do something, right? Well, that wasn't it. And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us and we beheld his glory, the glory as the of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. 
Verse 15, John bare witness of him and cried, saying, This was he of whom I spake. He that cometh after me is preferred before me, for he was before me. Wait a minute. John was six months older than Jesus. They were cousins, actually. So how could Jesus be before him? Because he was. Jesus always was. Okay. Um, and of his fullness have all we received grace for grace. That's grace upon grace. That's mercy and, and, and God's riches at Christ's expense above and on, piled on. Okay. For the law was given by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. Without the law, we wouldn't know sin. We wouldn't know how to, we wouldn't know where we were at, where we stood with God. And you know, it's not a good spot. But with Jesus, we know that our standing has been changed. That it's not all about the law, per se. It's the fact that Jesus Christ has covered the sin in our life. Because we could never work hard enough to do all the things that, that we're supposed to do to obey all the commandments of the law. Um, you have 10 commandments, right? And then you have 216 that the rabbis made up uh, on top of the 10. So 206 they made up. They had to tie little knots on their clothing, you know, to make sure that they stood out different. And have little bells on them. Yeah, that too. Bells. Yeah. And, oh, bright clothing. And be on the corners and pray. And pray. Give offering. Hey, I'm giving my tithes and offering. Um, not what God wanted. God wanted things to be done in secret and quiet, just between He and you, because He wants a relationship with you as a friend, a, f a friend that John got to know how close a friend Jesus was, because He even said, you know, He was the closest one. He was in His bosom. He, when they laid down to eat, He was next to Him. Yeah, it's like, wow. Okay. Um, so it says, no man, verse 18, has seen God at any time. Then it says, the only begotten Son, which is in the bosom of the Father, he hath declared him. Now, later we see where John is the one laying closest to Jesus' bosom. So you start seeing some of the closeness here. The only begotten Son, which is in the bosom of the Father, he hath declared him. Jesus has declared who the Father is. Jesus said, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. If you don't know me, you don't know the Father. Um, and verse 19, and this is the record of John when, he, when the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask John the Baptist, who are you? Who art thou? And he confessed and denied not, but confessed, I am not the Christ. I am not the Messiah. I'm not the one you're looking for. And they're like, well, who are you? What are you doing? Why are you baptizing? What is the purpose of this? And they asked him, what then? Are you Elijah? He says, I am not. Are you that prophet? His answer, no. And I said to him, well, who are you? That we may give an answer to them that sent us. What sayest thou of thyself? And he replies to them right out of Isaiah. He says, I am the voice of one crying in the wilderness. Make straight the way of the Lord, the path, the road, the way. As the prophet Isaiah said. Isaiah 40, verse 3. And they which were sent were the Pharisees. And they asked him, well, why, baptist, why, why baptizest thou then? If thou not be that Christ, nor Elijah, Elias, Neither that prophet. And John answered them, saying, I baptize with water, but there standeth one among you whom you know not. He it is who coming after me is preferred before me, whose shoe latchet I am not worthy to unloose. Hmm. Now, all people saw John the Baptist as someone great, okay? Now, John the Baptist was pretty rough to look at, all right? He was wearing camel's hair, not the nicest of clothing. He uh, wasn't eating food that normal people ate, locusts and honey. Hmm, interesting. And this guy was pretty rough and gruff, sun-worn, 
and out there in the water and in the woods and yelling out to people. And so they're wondering who he is, but he says, you know, I am the one who is preparing the way for who's to come. The kingdom of God is at hand, okay? That's when Jesus starts his ministry. You start hearing him saying, the kingdom of God is right here now, okay, is at hand. So verse 28 says, these things were done in Beth Abara, beyond Jordan, where John was baptizing, a place with much water. Uh, of course, water baptism was done with a full immersion. There was no sprinkling or pouring. Um, and we find this uh, borne out even in the early church, uh, one that they found now uh, from just about after this time period. Uh, and it had a baptistry outside, uh, mikvah, you know, where you could go in, you completely get underwater and come out, okay? Um, they found the actual church where the disciples uh, continue to meet. It's actually kind of a hole in the ground. It's interesting. Um, you walk down some steps, and there's a baptistry to the right, and there's a, a, an audience hall and some other things. And so you can go visit there even today. Uh, it's fenced off, you know, of course, but you can look in there and, and see. Uh, it's kind of interesting. But again, full immersion. So the next day, verse 29, John seeth Jesus coming unto him and saith, Behold the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. This is he whom I said, After me cometh a man which is preferred before me, for he was before me. Remember I said that this is Jesus, this is the one. So this, the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. That is a bold claim, because only God can take away sin. So, see, John's saying, this is the Messiah. Here he is. I told you he was coming, and this is he. And I knew him not, but that he should be made manifest to Israel. And so therefore am I come baptizing with water. And John bare record and saying, I saw the Spirit descending from heaven like a dove, and it abode upon him as he baptized him. And I knew him not, but that he sent me to baptize with water. The same said unto me, Upon whom thou shalt see the Spirit descending, and remaining on him, the same is he which baptizeth with the Holy Ghost. And I saw and bear record that this is the Son of God. This is the Messiah. This is Yeshua, Jesus. The God who saves. Verse 35, again the next day after John stood and two of his disciples and looking upon Jesus as he walks, John said, Behold the Lamb of God. And the two disciples heard him speak and they, and they followed Jesus. Now, there's two different kinds of thing, ways that people can interact with, with God. Um, if they're a believer, okay, they're seeking. Uh, one of them is that you go and collect others, all right? Uh, hey, check this out. I found something unusual. I want you to come see. Okay? Uh, another is someone who secludes themselves and waits for God to come find them. And, and when he does, it, hmm, things start rolling pretty fast. But let's, let's, let's see how this all plays out. He says, um, again, the next day after John stood, two of his disciples, they, they see him. See, he says, behold, the Lamb of God. Two disciples heard him speak, so they followed Jesus. They leave John the Baptist and follow after Jesus. And Jesus turned and saw them following and said, What seek ye? And they said unto him, Rabbi, which is to say, being interpreted, Master, will you stay? Where, you, where dwellest thou? Where you live? Where's your home? Interesting, because Jesus says, Come and see. They came and saw where he dwelt and abode with him that day, for it's about the tenth hour, the sun had set. One of the two which heard John speak and followed him was Andrew. This was Simon Peter's brother. He first findeth his own brother, Simon, and saith unto him, We have found the Messiah, which is being interpreted the, the Christ. We, we found him. And he brought Peter, Simon, to Jesus. And when Jesus beheld him, he said, Thou art Simon, the son of Jonah. Thou shalt be called Cephas, which is by interpretation a stone, a rock. Uh, actually, it's more like a chip off the old block. 
Because the real rock and foundation stone is who? Jesus, the cornerstone. So. so the day following, Jesus would go forth into Galilee and findeth Philip and saith unto him, Follow me. Now, what's weird is that he just does. <laughs> I don't know how that's weird, but in, in a sense, it's strange, odd, isn't it? You just walk up and Follow me. Okay. You go. Now, Philip was of Bethsaida, the same city that Andrew and Peter lived in. So Philip goes out and goes to Nathanael and saith unto him, We have found him, of whom Moses in the law and the prophets did write. His name is Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. We know this guy. We, come on, we got to go. And Nathanael said, Can any good thing come out of Nazareth? there was no prophecy out there that, that spoke of Nazareth for anything other than it being a pretty nasty place. Interesting. So Philip says, Philip saith unto him, come and see. Well, Jesus saw Nathanael coming to him and saith unto him, behold, an Israelite indeed in whom is no guile. In other words, this guy is just all out there. There's nothing hidden. He's what you see is what you get. What he says is what he means. Plain. And Nathanael saith unto him, How do you know? When, whence knowest thou me? How do you know me, Jesus? And he said, Before Philip came to you, I was with you under that fig tree. I saw you there. What happened at that moment? I wonder. I really kind of wonder. What was Philip? What was, what was Philip? Uh, what was Nathanael talking to God about? What did he add? You know, did he say something like, I'd really like to know who the, the Messiah is. I want to see him. But whatever it was, this moment, it struck such a deep chord with Nathaniel that he looks at Jesus and he answered and said to him, Rabbi, thou art the son of God. You are the king of Israel. Wow. What an epiphany moment for Nathaniel and for the rest who are looking at each other going, well, we knew he said, behold, the Lamb of God. We knew he said, the, the, he's the one taking away the, sin, the, the, the sins of the world. We, 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 we've heard these things. But we've heard that he might be the Messiah, the Christ. He's, but the Son of God, the King of Israel? That got people's attention, by the way, uh, and started attracting a different crowd. And Jesus called to him some of these people. And these people were um, called the Sicade. They were uh, assassins. They had a curved blade, and their job was to murder Romans at any moment to cause and disrupt problems. Um, and so Jesus actually calls some of these to be his disciples. Interesting. But Jesus answered uh, to Nathanael and says, Because I said unto thee, I saw thee under the fig tree, you're going to believe me. You believe us, you. Believe us thou. Says, I shall see greater things than these. <laughs> he had no idea what he was about to see in the next three and a half years because every single waking moment that Christ was alive and walking this earth, there were things going on that John said, if I could written a book about everything that Jesus said and did and the miracles that were performed from the moment that he was awake and as he walked, the book could not be contained in this world. It would be so huge. Verse 51, and he saith unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto you, hereafter ye shall see heaven open, the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. You're going to see some things that you had no idea could exist. So Jesus sometimes finds you under the fig tree and calls you out and reveals your innermost darkest or innermost thoughts and makes them plain as day and speaks them. Sometimes he sends a friend to come and knock on your door and say, hey, wake up, come and see, we found him. Um, pray for your friends, pray for folks, share with them the love that Christ has for them because God loves them and really wants them to, yes, like John the Baptist said, repent, turn from your evil ways. There is a better path, there's a way of Salvation, a way of forgiveness, a way where we're um, no longer bound, shackled, imprisoned uh, by, the, by the sin 
some people say, oh, well, the, the way of sin is, is freedom. Nobody can tell me what to do. I have no master. Yeah, you do. Your master is uh, not nice either. But Jesus is a wonderful master. His yoke is easy. His burden is light. If you just come and lay your burden down at the cross of Jesus Christ and leave it there and let Jesus heal you and remove the sin from your life, sometimes the activities that we're in take time to get rid of, but that is what God's all about. He's, he has a process, and this process began with the moment that you heard his word and you believed him. So I pray that you take that first step to believe in him and trust him with your heart, mind, and soul, that he is worthy, that the work that he's done is enough to save you because that's why he came to this earth. That's why he died, was for your sin. His blood was shed to cover your sin so that you could have a new way, a new life. And John the Baptist was saying, behold, here comes the Lamb of God which taketh away the sin of the world. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you for this day, and we thank you, Lord, for your many, many blessings. Thank you for loving us so much, for sending Jesus to us. Thank you for making John be able to write these things and write them so plainly that we might be able to see and, and really get a feeling of, of what it would have been like to be there in those times and those days. And uh, Lord, just the power and, and the passion that you have, Lord, Teach us, Lord, to be hungry after your word. Teach us, Lord, to, to just love you with an open heart. Give us your vision, Lord. Help us, send us people that we could help to comfort and to save and to give to you, Lord. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen.